Oops, that is the wrong shit. I clicked the wrong thing. That, there's the right scene. There we go. <laughs> um, with, with that starting us off, uh, welcome to the Game Session Podcast. Uh, I'm your host, Jose, slash Seth Rikage. This week, I am joined by Corey. Hello, I'm Corey. <laughs> Ind- indubitably. And we're also joined by Atma, who... Uh, Shall be making some more frequent occurrences, it would it would seem as if, yes. I hope so. Yay. Hello. Member slash rotating slash good friend, all around good person, yes. I I agree with all of those statements. I agree with all the positive attributes that you have given to me, yes. Yes, yes, very much. Please distribute more at your nearest convenience. <laughs> <laughs> Um, Game Session Podcast is filmed here live at 6.30 p.m. PST on Sundays. You can find it later on podcast services as well as on YouTube as full episodes and individually cut up segments. Uh, With that out of the way, let me go ahead and thank my patrons and Twitch subs, which I keep the list right around here. Uh, So for patrons, uh, Ramen Nomad, Sly, Force Big Boss, and Bo. Thank you for that. And for Twitch subs, I want to give a shout out to Canty Unplugged, Ramen Nomad, King Cory Bear. Hey, that guy seems familiar. Uh, <laughs> Shy Bum, J Newy, 666, uh, Aztec God, Nitro, Lurvinar, and Atma Phoenix, who also seems familiar for some reason. Weird. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, with that out of the way, um, yes, let's. Let's just jump straight into the <laughs> the, the, the direct stuff. So sh- rough sh- show format for today. Um, let's do the Nintendo stuff. Then we'll jump into the new releases, and then we'll jump into other miscellaneous news and whatnot. Um, so yeah, Nintendo Direct happened what last month or not even last? I guess just Monday or whatever. Tuesday, I think. I think it was, Tuesday. It was my birthday, so it was Tuesday. Yeah. It was a special day indeed. <laughs> <laughs> uh overall thoughts Atma. good direct or bad direct i i thought it was a very good direct i i didn't i was out for the the xbox um and square enix conferences but of everything that i did see like i felt like the nintendo direct was the best thing to come out of e3 there was a lot of stuff specifically for atma so a very atma oriented direct yeah what about you, Corey? <laughs> just, just overall thoughts. Um, honestly, I, uh, I mean, I caught, I caught the, like the video of the Nintendo Direct, so I was able to like skip through the things I really wasn't interested in. Um, which is the benefit of that. Uh, I think the most things I am interested in are um, probably the new Metroid because it does look, it does look interesting. Um. It was like the two the 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 side scroller one. I can't remember the what's the sub name for that one. It's like um Dread. 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 Yes, thank you. Like Judge Dread. Um not voiced also, by Sylvester Stallone. But <laughs> also the fact that they like they're like, hey, but don't worry, we haven't forgotten about Metroid Prime 4. And I'm like, okay. But I think I think uh I, I'm I'm going to be basic here and say that I'm I'm just absolutely stoked to be uh, to actually have some Breath of the Wild two footage. Um, I, I I literally can't wait. I just I love Zelda so freaking much. <laughs> um, I think for me overall, I think it was pretty solid. Um, I admittedly haven't been playing on my Switch too much lately. I already have a. I'm trying not to use the word backlog. I'm trying to exclusively stick to the word collection. Like it might seem like a weird semantical jump, but it has a much more positive outlook. I don't feel as stressed about trying to get to stuff. I'm just like, hmm, should I really be finishing uh, Ratchet and Clank? I'm just like, you know, nah, I just feel like playing some Siege. It's cool. I'm going to do what I feel like. Um, oh, but yeah. Oh. And, and also, I forgot one other thing. Uh, I am also excited for Fatal Frame. Ooh, yes. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> shoot, where was I? I forget. It's okay. Corey was talking, and Corey talking is always a good thing. I will never, com- <laughs> I will never complain about such a thing. Yeah, but about so- your collection, yes. Yeah. Um, sorry about that. Energy drink gives me the burps. Um, so yeah, let's just go down the list of some of the announcements. If I happen to miss anything, um, whether it's co-hosts or people watching, feel free to chime in. Uh, Smash Bros got a new fighter. Uh. It's uh, what's the dude's name? Uh, Kazuya from Tekken 
I never played too much Tekken growing up, but it seems like a good pick. I I love that he's just tossing dudes into uh into the volcanoes. Seems very on point for what he's done in his own series. But uh, I, uh, I think I I played Tekken three. I think that was on the PS one. I think that was the big fighting game I had on the original PlayStation way back in the day. I played a lot of Tekken three, so I'm familiar with Kazuya. Kazuya. I usually. I usually would play Tekken in arcades uh, growing up. I, I never really, I don't think I actually, well, mm, maybe I did have a Tekken game. I just don't remember very, very, uh, very well. Cause I wasn't, I, I, I was more into like Mortal Kombat and like, I would, I think I actually played more like Dead or Alive than I did with Tekken, you know? I feel like I have to ask, but which Dead or Alive? I want to say Dead or Alive two so not, not the booby saying. volleyball one i mean i have seen that before but i have i don't think i ever played that one <laughs> you're not missing out <laughs> i know i know <sighs> oh my god um yeah um i haven't played smash in a quick minute i i loved smash growing up but i uh, didn't necessarily have too many people locally to play with but uh cory's right around the corner so that might change i'll have to put cory in his place I haven't played Smash in a while, so you probably very well might. <laughs> <laughs> but um, uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, cool character. Uh, I'm just, I'm just waiting for Sora to be thrown into Smash. It just has to. It is crazy to me more, that they- one more chance. <laughs> it's, it's like the obvious yeah. choice, right? I mean, I just he, they keep. He, I, here's my here's my issue. They keep throwing in Fire Emblem characters or slash anime characters. Uh or they keep throwing in like actual like fighting game characters which makes sense i understand like it's a it's a fighting game but like you're talking about a game that has freaking like mario and sonic and like metal gear and like at, like in in the same game like think more outside the box nintendo don't just put fi- don't put fighters in a fighting game like come on like <laughs> I, I don't know i think they could use like maybe like 10 extra fire emblem characters oh yeah just at least at least 10 more <laughs> there's so many more fire emblem characters you know yeah i mean you get like 30 allies in each game why not just shove all of them in there yeah yeah get get some more freaking incest and eugenics going <laughs> on and yeah. i don't think i've had the fire emblem discussion with either of you but there's some there's some messed up shit in there <laughs> um, well, I, under- I I understand they really wanted to draw in the Fire Emblem community because um, there is a big following for Fire Emblem. Like, let's be honest. So they wanted they wanted Fire Emblem players to have a reason to actually enjoy playing Smash Brothers. There, so. it, it is not a coincidence that Fire Emblem was financially saved the second they put in dating elements in there. Mm-hmm. Wait, what, what are people saying in chat? Um, uh, Waypoint set CJ, our, our buddy CJ on from last week, says for suggestions f- to be Master Chief, Kazuma Kiryu, CJ from San Andreas need to be in Smash. <laughs> Hell yeah. Oh CJ's ultimate is is a train and he has to catch up to it or something. <laughs> or that maybe is number- true. Uh, <laughs> Canty Unplugged did make a statement saying dating elements improve all games. That's a fact, actually. Um, yeah. uh let's see uh breath of the wild 2 it showed off some weird stuff to be honest so it's just just some stuff i caught from it is uh there's a lot of falling from the sky kind of like in the same vein as skyward sword um there appears to be some kind of new power where you turn into a green little teardrop but you float up and through objects there's a bunch of sky land masses once again kind of like skyward sword which is kind of making me see why they're remastering that one in particular uh set for 2022 and apparently you can have a flamethrower which is pretty cool yeah like it suddenly with seeing that footage it makes sense why they are doing a remaster of skyward sword because mm-hmm. they are extending the map of uh hyrule to now include the sky so it's like you know here yeah. we are <laughs> What about you, Otman? Any thoughts on Breath of the Wild 2? Uh, so I am one of those strange, weird people that did not like Breath of the Wild. Um, so I have 
no thoughts head empty. I am, I am curious uh, and, and more power to you. Cause I, I don't think that's strange at all. I have heard of people like not liking it. What is your reasoning? I would like, I'm curious. Um, so I really like the normal Zelda formula. And mm-hmm. like, I know a lot of people really enjoyed breath of the wild because it broke the sort of tedium of going to a dungeon, getting the thing, using it in the dungeon, going to the next dungeon and like the open world and just being able to climb everywhere, do everything, like not having any direction whatsoever was like a freedom for a lot of people. And I have realized I like a little bit of direction in my games and I like Zelda's formula because you don't get that in any other game. Like there's dark siders and there was like 3d dot game heroes on the PS3 mm-hmm. and that's a deep cut right there. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I got it because I like Zelda like games and things like that, where you have dungeons and things. And so I played like two, three hours of breath of the wild. I finished the first, I got all the stuff and left the plateau and I started wandering around and I was like, I don't know what to do. Yeah. Oh God. I, yeah. I, and I have, and I had like no motivation to actually go anywhere either. And I, mm-hmm. I think like I just, the open world didn't click with me the way it does in other games. And so I just ended up dropping it. And like, I'm happy for everyone who loved the first one and getting their sequel. And I'm excited to see if maybe this one does new things that, draw me in i'm mm-hmm. always up for trying it but for now just and i i i i totally that's totally valid and that's i totally get that um cause, because literally there have been games by similar example uh i i the last assassin's creed game i ever played was was black flag i literally turned on uh odyssey i played like the first couple of like missions I looked at the map. I just set down my controller and I walked away. I literally <laughs> like it is beyond massive. And it's just, it's one of those things that I just wasn't invested enough in to give it that much time that it needed. Right. Um, and so I, I totally get that. Uh, I love, I, I'm, I'm, I'm of the like mind of, of, I like the linear. I like, I like Zelda being a little open world, and having that linear path, like, okay, this is, I, I know what to do next, but I can still kind of go off and do extra stuff here, but not to the point where I, you get completely lost, you know? Um, so I understand. I understand. Yeah. It's really funny that you picked Assassin's Creed Odyssey because I spent like 110 hours in that <laughs> game and that one just drew me in <laughs> because I, I love yeah. Greek mythology. So I was just like a hundred percent all in on ancient Greece and like I was doing yes. everything in that game. So I, th- I think it's funny you point to uh, Odyssey as a, as an example, because um, th- there's like two modes in there. There's like, there's like exploration. And then I forget if they just call it like classic where it's like, do you want waypoints exactly where you're supposed to go? Or do you want like a hint for the region? You have to go there. You have to scout it out. And um, so I guess like kind of like Breath of the Wild versus like more traditional. And like I started off in that Breath of the Wild, just like, yeah, tell me the rough region. I'll scout with my hawk. And just like after like 10 hours, I'm just like, yeah, no, fuck it. I just let, let, let's streamline this a little bit. If you think like- about it, though, if you think about it, though, this isn't the first uh, as far as Zelda. This isn't the first open world Zelda we've gotten because uh, Wind Waker was pretty open world. And you were on a boat and you're on a boat. Motherfucker. And the, and, and, the, the, and, the, <laughs> and the soundtrack on while you're on the ocean is just great. fucking beautiful. So. I, I think a lot of the issues for me with Breath of the Wild, and I think I've played it to completion with like all the shrines, and whatnot, like three times. I'm, wow. I'm, I'm kind of obsessive with that. I did it um, once and I was good. I, I didn't. <laughs> this is going to sound bad, and I've talked about it before. I did not enjoy my first playthrough, and then I'm just like these systems and mechanics and just like how everything's entirely way too open there's not much of a narrative hook like none of that clicked with me but until like maybe like the 80 percent mark of the first place i'm just like oh yes this makes sense now i'm gonna travel i'm gonna i'm gonna look at the map see if there's any weird little divots or anything mm-hmm. like out of the ordinary because then i'm gonna be like there's a fucking Koroxy there. I fucking know it. And sure enough yeah. you show up there you see a rock out of place you're like yeah i know what's going on mm-hmm. um but yeah, I think uh, I think I'd prefer like a more traditional Zelda setup, I guess. Yeah, 
yeah, and that's fair. I think I, I have a feeling they're they're gonna keep. I I don't think they're gonna keep things completely the same because I feel like if they just literally reuse the whole the, the same map over again, it would literally just shut down so many players and like, no, I'm not I'm not doing this shit again. Like I don't want to do all this shit, all the same shit, and I see all the same stuff all over again. Like they need to they if they're gonna be bringing in the second one, they need to bring it in with like fresh new scenery um new ma- like new kinds of missions i think they are going to still keep the open world aspect but maybe they'll do what atma is saying uh and and have a little bit more direction i um, i know it's not really par for the course for zelda but i would love maybe some more in-depth combat aside from just like the one attack button like you, you can do um you can do like perfect dodges you can do some parries with a shield and whatnot but how how did the two of you feel about the weapon degradation? Like like to me, I got used to it. It wasn't a burden, but it wasn't actively like, oh yes, I I enjoy having it in here. Like I could go either way. I'm I feel like I'm the same. I I I honestly could go with or without it. It doesn't really make a difference to me. Yeah, um, I I didn't have any particular feelings for or against it. One thing I did though have an issue with. I don't I don't think I don't think many people have an issue with this. But I have an issue with it because most Zelda games have an, has a have a musical instrument in the game that you can use, and the fact that they didn't have they didn't implement a musical instrument deeply saddened me. Because like Ocarina of Time, Majora's Mask, they both have the ocarina. You get Wind Waker, Wind Waker with the freaking baton. You get uh, you get a harp in Skyward Sword in Twilight Princess. You you're a wolf that howls like. You know, it's just give me a musical instrument. Your musical <laughs> instrument is your sword as you carve a symphony of death through your enemies, Corey. <laughs> no, they gave you an iPad that's clearly better than a musical instrument. You can Obviously. play MP3s on the, the Yeah, your musical instrument is every time you get closer to a shrine and it does that dit, 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 or whatever sound it is and it just won't turn off. <laughs> I just I, I I like I don't know what it is, but I really like musical instrument implement uh, implanta- implantations Im- I, don't Im- know. Imp- <laughs> <laughs> I like it when they implement music musical stuff like in games because it's it like there's there's i i don't know there's like no other game that's that's similar to when you get to use the ocarina in ocarina of time and majora's mask like it's I, just it's so unique you know I, I feel um, like I'll understand the two of you on a very deep human level by asking this question. Favorite Zelda game? Ocarina of Time. <laughs> Link to the Past. Ooh. That's a good that's a really good one. See, I I'm I'm stuck. I would either say Wind Waker for overall, and just I love the music in there, or Majora's Mask for how fucking weird it is. I have I have beaten Wind Waker, I think two or three times and Majora's Mask I think that many times I've beaten Ocarina of Time I can't even count like so many (laughs) many I've I've played Link to the Past and beaten it way many times I've played Link's Awakening a bunch because that was my go-to game for the Game Boy when I went on like vacations as a kid I would just play through Link's Awakening every time I went on vacation did you nice. play the uh, remake they did a couple years back? I did. I love it. It's fucking it beautiful. Really, yeah, it I still, so I still need to play that. It's on my on my list of go go. Like I need to go back to and play it, that. <laughs> it has some obtuse puzzles here and there. Like you'll more than likely have to look up like how to advance at some point. But mm-hmm. it, it's yeah, really I, good. It, it, it's so like I knew what I was doing, and I was like people who are doing this for the first time will have no idea what the hell to do. This is so weird. Like, how did I figure this out mm-hmm. as a kid? Like, yeah. Yeah. The early Zelda's, I want to say like, even maybe, maybe not links to the past had the issue, but there's just like some really obtuse. just like, how are you realistically supposed to figure that out without talking to someone or looking up a guide or, and it was harder back then. You didn't, you couldn't just go IGN.com slash walkthrough, whatever. Yep. Exactly. You had to have like a walkthrough book or something. Mm hmm. Remember those? It, it, Remember walkthrough books? Oh my gosh. It, it was a hard ask going to mom saying like, hey, can you spend uh, back in the day, those games could be like fucking 90 bucks, you know, and then inflation on top of that. Mm-hmm. Um, and just like, hey, you bought me this really expensive thing. Can you buy me the book for it too? 
<laughs> yeah. I was like, oh, fuck off. <laughs> mm-hmm. We, uh, side note, like literally growing up, um, we would, uh, when the internet was still young uh, and I was still a, uh, a dewy eyed little gamer. Um, to be fair, you still are. I still am. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> But uh, my 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 brother or my mom would uh, print out like you know how when people would like li- I mean people still do it nowadays but like you know how when people would ear- early on they would type entire like custom walkthroughs of like in like HTML format and then you could print that out on your home printer and like just go through it we would do that for like all like uh horror games or like you know like silent hill like the original silent hills when we were going through them we would literally have my mom like reading the strategy guide while we went through it mm-hmm. and like uh, and she's like oh wait no go back to this door or something like that and <laughs> <laughs> i was uh so crazy. i was just i was just typing in a chat just like i i legitimately miss like just going to like whatever random grocery store just being like let me grab a copy of nintendo power or get a game guide like half the time um i would just read through the guide for fucking fun just like find out secrets and then make maybe i even get the game like a year later i'm just like huh i already know everything there is to know about this right yeah that was a fun experience i think growing up is is literally those game guides my my favorite game guide is for uh, Final Fantasy VI, um, oh. because the it, I don't remember exactly who wrote it, but it's like it's almost written like a story, and it's like funny. There is humor involved mm-hmm. and everything, and sometimes instead of playing the game, I'll just read through the guide again and mm-hmm. get like nearly the same experience as playing the game and. Uh, yeah, that that's always been my favorite guide that I've ever ever purchased is that specific one. That's pretty cool. Yeah, I love that. 